Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Inside the World of TCR. With championships around the world reaching a climax, touring car battles, always close and exciting, have become even more fierce. This time we travel to Asia for WTCR, TCR Australia and TCR Japan. We're in Europe for TCR Europe, TCR Russia, TCR Scandinavia, TCR Italy and TCR Germany. And we'll conclude our world tour in the USA with the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge and TC America. We'll also squeeze in a one-to-one -one with Nelson Ponciatisi. Stay with us. After a two-month-long summer break, the FIA WTCR was back on track in mid-September at the Ningbo International Speed Park in China. There was drama before the start for series leader Esteban Guerrieri, who was forced to start from the pit lane after his fire extinguisher went off on the grid. For the start of the first race, it was an unusual home front row, with Ivan Muller on pole driving the Chinese Lincoln Co car and Ma Qinghua, a Chinese driver, starting second. Muller took advantage of that pole position to lead from the start and then closing the gaps to keep Ma at bay during the race. After a fairly processional race, four-time World Touring Car champion Muller claimed his first victory since he joined Lincoln Co, giving the Chinese manufacturer a special reason to celebrate at its home race track. Ma Qinghua completed a brilliant day for the Chinese by finishing second, only two tenths behind. However, the drivers who gained the most from the race results were Mikhail Altkona and Norbert Mikhilic, who finished third and fourth and so significantly closed the gap in the standings from Esteban Guerrieri, who didn't score. In the second race, it was chaos from the very beginning. While Andy Prio sprinted from pole to lead into turn one, Thiago Montero and Benjamin Leuchter finished in the barriers. It was the same fate for Esteban Guerrieri, who crashed while he was behind Augusto Farfus, a second consecutive DNF for the championship leader. And the crash was even bigger for Marching Wa and his Alfa Romeo Giulietta. There was even drama out in front when there was a collision between Prio and Mikulic. The Brit spun off and retired, while Tarquini benefited from the situation and took the lead. One lap later, Tarquini, too far behind in the driver's points, handed his teammate first position. Immediately afterwards, Nicky Katzberg and Daniel Hagloff battling for third made contact, which elevated Muller and Björk to third and fourth. So this was how Norbert Mikulic not only grabbed his third win of the season, but also the lead in the driver's standings. Tarquini was second, while Muller and Björk also scored valuable points by finishing third and fourth. Hagloff was fifth and Tashi sixth. At the start of race three, Muller and Erlache led the field, but in the middle of the pack there was a collision between Frederick Verwisch, Nesta Girolami, Daniel Hagloff and jean carl Vernet, which meant the Swede and the Frenchman were both out. A couple of turns later, Vavish hit Mikulic and sent him into Prio's car. The Guernseyman rejoined while Mikulic retired. Later, Mehdi Benani and Tiago Montero made contact on the main straight. Montero lost control and crashed into the pit wall. Benani was then given a drive-through penalty for causing the incident. For the Portuguese driver, after his triumph on home soil at Villarreal, it was a zero points weekend in China. And so Ivan Muller claimed his second victory of the weekend. Jan Erlache followed his uncle to secure a 1-2 finish for Lincoln Co, while Gabriele Tarquini completed the podium. Farfus was fourth, Björk fifth and Panis sixth. With both Norbert Mikulic and Esteban Guerrieri retired, Muller closed the gap from the two leaders in the standings. He's now 17 points behind Mikulic and just one behind Guerrieri. With still three events remaining, the battle remains wide open. The next stop is Suzuka at the end of October. Barcelona hosted the sixth and penultimate event of TCR Europe. In the first race, Andreas Beckman started from pole and took the lead into turn one. But at the back of the grid, Al Khalifi and Leonov collided and the safety car was deployed to help remove the vehicles from the track. But not before Andreas Beckman went wide at turn three, moving down to third. On lap five, after the race resumed, Magnus went off at the chicane because of a power steering failure. 
On lap six, championship contender Luca Engschler went wide and was then hit by Jimmy Claret, who was pushed by Dominic Baumann. Julien Brichet and Josh Files took the chequered flag in first and second positions. But after the race, the Frenchman was given a five-second penalty for being in the wrong position on the grid, and this dropped him to second. Josh Files, meanwhile, was given a 30-second penalty for being completely outside of his position on the grid, as you can see from this footage. So ultimately, the win went to Andreas Beckman, the first for the young Swede in the championship. Brichet was second in front of Santiago Urrutia, Jack Young, Nelson Ponciatisi and Tom Coronel. The second race was far more lively. While Dan Lloyd took the lead after starting from pole, behind him some fierce battles thrilled the spectators. On lap two, while Magnus unsuccessfully challenged Lloyd into the braking zone at turn one, Santiago Urrutia managed to pass Julien Brichet for fifth. On the same lap, the safety car was deployed after Columbani and Moura collided and stopped on track. On lap five, Urrutia tried to overtake Coronel for fourth, but he was clearly far too optimistic. He completely outbraked himself and ran wide. Julien Brichet, watching the duel, took advantage of the situation and passed Coronel, while Urrutia then made another mistake and dropped to 11th. On lap seven, Brichet easily overtook Jack Young for third. On lap nine, championship leader Josh Files overtook Tom Coronel under braking into turn one for fifth. On the following lap, Luca Engschler tried to pass Coronel into the chicane. They made contact and Engschler dropped back to 11th, compromising his title ambitions still further after he scored no points in race one. For Dan Lloyd, this was a lights to flag win. Magnus was second, Brichet third, Young fourth, Files fifth and Ponciatisi sixth. Josh Files finished the race fifth, and even though Brichet scored 30 points more than him over the weekend, the British driver kept a lead of 48 points over the Frenchman in second. That's a huge margin with only one event remaining and a maximum of 85 points on offer. For Dan Lloyd, this was his second win of the season. His joy at the end was more than justified. The season finale will be in Italy at the Temple of Speed at Monza over the second weekend in October. After racing in single-seaters and endurance events, Nelson Ponciatisi debuted this year in touring cars, competing in TCR Europe. His first race weekend at the Hungaro Ring was incredible, so we had a little chat with him. After the first race, I, I, I was leading the championship, so I was, uh, I was really happy. I didn't expect that because uh, it was my first race with uh, touring car. And then we have two hard meetings. So we had to work a lot, and we, since, two, since Austria and uh, Oscherschleben, we came, we came back with uh, two fourth place and uh, one podium. Unfortunately, I lost the podium because uh, with the decision of the steward, but uh, the pace was really good. So. I really uh, like touring car. I like fights, I like uh, the race, because uh, we push really, really hard. Since the last lap, it's never finished. It's completely different than what I did since uh, six, seven years. Because you are alone, so you have to manage your weekend alone. It's a short race, so qualifying are really important. It's something that uh, I, I little bit for, forget since uh, single seater. I learned many things uh, since uh, this winter with, uh, with Yvan. He explained me many, many things, how to, to, to set up the car, how to, to manage the weekend, how to manage the tires, because it's, uh, it's completely different than what I know, the tires, how to, to push. And uh, I learned uh, on the setup as well. Compared to a big car like, uh, I don't know, GP2 or LMP2, that we have, you have many things to do. In this kind of car, it's, uh, as it's really tight between all the cars, I think small detail. Uh, makes a difference. My team uh, principal is uh, Justine. She's really involved in the in the team. She she works a lot uh, with uh, us. She 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 helps us to to know what to do during a meeting race uh, meeting race weekend. It's good that the wo the women are more more and more involved in the motorsport. They can um, give uh, another view of. Uh, 
the, in their view of the, of the of racing, and they can uh, we can improve the sport with that, with uh, with her. At the start of TCR Australia round 16 at Sandown Raceway, FIA WTCR guest star Nesta Girolami made a great start from pole, while Andre Heingartner, second on the grid, nearly stalled and so dropped behind. While Girolami pulled away, on lap 9 championship leader Will Brown in a Hyundai passed Jordan Cox's Alfa Romeo for third. On lap 12, Brown passed John Martin's Honda for second at the braking zone into turn 1. After being chased for several laps, Martin made a mistake and Cox quickly benefited from the situation to move up to third, with Garth Tander behind the two also passing Martin for fourth. Nobody though was able to challenge Girolami, who easily took his first TCR Australia race victory. Championship leader Brown finished second and so increased his advantage by another 16 points over O'Keefe, who was classified eighth. Cox completed the podium in third. In the second race, on a wet track, Girolami made good use of pole and led from Cox, who was third on the grid. On lap two, Brown passed Tander for P5, while Fullwood hit Morecambe, who spun into the gravel at turn nine, and was then given a drive-through for the incident. At the beginning of the following lap, Ingall spun off at turn one and the safety car was deployed. On lap 13, after a second safety car period, Jordan Cox's Alfa Romeo Giulietta went wide at turn one, and so Garth Tander's Audi RS3 LMS passed both him and then Moffat's Renault Megane to move into second. <laughs> Nesta Girolami managed to avoid the various battles behind him, repeating his win from race one. Garth Tander was second in front of Moffat and Heimgartner, with the latter then dropped to 12th by a 30-second penalty for an incident with Cox. At the start of race three, Girolami sprinted from pole once again, followed by D'Alberto, Tanda, Moffat and championship leader Brown, who spun off at turn two and rejoined at the back of the field. On lap three, Dylan O'Keefe, second in the championship, went off and rejoined in last position. Nesta Girolami, though, was never headed during the whole weekend at Sandown. The Argentine guest star led from the first free practice to the end of race three, becoming the first driver to record a hat-trick of wins in the series. Will Brown recovered from the early spin to finish in eighth position and was crowned driver's champion in the series' inaugural season with one event still to go. At the beginning of September, TCR Scandinavia paid its first visit to Denmark as rounds 11 and 12 ran at Jullensringen. On a circuit which doesn't favour overtaking, Robert Dahlgren led from the start, followed by Elgard, Brink, Vernesson and Morin. On lap four, Elgard served a drive-through penalty for a false start and so dropped to sixth, allowing Robert Dahlgren to build a comfortable lead and so he was untouchable for the whole race. This was how Dahlgren grabbed his third win of the season. The Brink motorsport duo of Tobias Brink and Andreas Werneson claimed the remaining podium positions, but dropped to 24 and 31 points behind Dahlgren in the championship. In the second race, Morin made a poor start from pole, and so Alberg led the field into turn one from Brink and Werneson. Behind them, Kim Lund Johansson and Michaela Olin Kotelinski came together. The Dane lost control of his Cupra and collected the Alfa Romeo Giulietta of Martin Jensen. Both cars remained stranded in the gravel trap at Turn 1, and so the safety car was deployed. The race resumed on lap 4, and on the next lap, Vernesson looked to be in trouble with the handling of his Audi, dropping from 3rd to 5th before losing another two places to Anderson and Olin Kotelinski. The fight for the lead was close, with the top five covered by less than two seconds. On lap 10, Dahlgren passed Elgard for 4th, and then began chasing Morin at each breaking point. On lap 13, they made contact on the start-finish straight. Elgar joined the fight and tried to pass both at the end of the straight. However, as Morin closed the door, the Dane braked on the wet part of the track. His Honda skidded out of control and hit Morin's Audi. Both cars went off into the gravel, while Dahlgren safely went through. For Andreas Alberg, it was his second victory of the season. Tobias Brink was second and Dahlgren third. Anderson was fourth, Olin Kotelinski fifth and Vernesson sixth. In the standings, Dahlgren retained his lead with a margin of 21 points over Brink, while Alberg climbed to third a further 10 points adrift. 
Mantor Park will host the last two races of the season in October. Hockenheim hosted TCR Germany rounds 11 and 12. In the first race, pole sitter Harold Prochik made a superb start and led going into turn one. On lap two, Theo Koikord forced Mike Halder to run wide, and so Koikord, Max Hesse and Andreas Beckmann all moved up a place as a result, and Halder dropped back temporarily to fifth. On lap 10, an impossibly late braking move from Niederscheider ended with this collision, with championship leader Antti Buri, who went off and dropped to 10th. For Prochik, it was a lights-to-flag victory ahead of Max Hesse and Theo Koikort to form an all-Hyundai podium. With Buri only finishing 10th, his lead in the series had been slashed to just three points. On lap five of the second race, Max Hesse, who'd started from sixth on the grid, overtook Dominic Fugel for the lead. Hesse took the chequered flag a little under half a second ahead of Jessica Beckman, with Prochik in third place a further nine-tenths adrift. With Buri finishing only 12th, Max Hesse moved into the lead in the championship standings ahead of Prochik. The TCR Germany season finale then took place at the Saxon Ring. At the start of the first race, Dominic Fugel sprinted from pole into the lead, while Buri, who was third on the grid, muscled his way past Mike Halder to take P2. Over the last laps, there was drama for Hesse, whose pace faded and so he dropped from fifth to eighth. Dominic Fugel won the race, but Hesse managed to retain the leadership in the standings. But his pursuers, Harold Prochik and Antti Buri, reduced their gaps to three and four points respectively. So, the final race of the season began with three men within four points in the title fight. Unsurprisingly, it was a breathtaking race that ended with the four title contenders risking everything right until the final lap. It was Buri who was the first to cross the finishing line with a margin of 11 thousandths of a second over Hesse. However, he was given a one-second time penalty for a collision with Prochik that dropped him to third in the race and the standings behind Hesse and Prochik. And so, 18-year-old Max Hesse became the first German champion of the series and also the youngest. TCR Italy was at Vallelunga for the penultimate event of the season. Massimiliano Mugelli, who'd inherited pole position after Marco Pellegrini was sanctioned for not respecting the blue flags, took the lead after a close fight with Enrico Bittera. But Bittera showed much faster pace, and this was when he took the lead from Mugelli at the Cimini bend. He also set the fastest lap, and seemed to be in a position to pull away. On lap three, Pellegrini, who was running sixth, suffered a front right puncture. Lap after lap, Mugelli managed to reduce the gap from Bittera, and on lap eight he benefited from a slight mistake by Bittera, and he retook the lead. One lap later, Bittera made another mistake at the Tornantino braking zone, and he was overtaken by Matteo Greco. Two laps later, Guidetti too passed Bittera for third at the end of the straight. And so, after 11 races, Massimiliano Mugelli and the Alfa Romeo Giulietta of PRS Motorsport took their long-awaited maiden win in TCR Italy. Matteo Greco was second and Jacopo Guidetti third. The reigning champion, Salvatore Tavano, was only fifth, but remained a solid points leader thanks to the misfortunes of his rivals Pellegrini and Bittera. Argenti should have been on pole on the reversed grid race too, but he suffered a technical issue in his Opel Astra, and so Scalvini started first, keeping the advantage at the beginning of the race, before the safety car was deployed, following a contact between the Alfa Romeo Giulietta of race one winner Mugelli and the Hyundai of Pellegrini, which left the Alfa stuck in the middle of the track. This was when Tavano overtook his teammate Scalvini for the lead of the race. The race then ended with two incidents that occurred almost simultaneously, one between Pellegrini and Guidetti that resulted in the Hyundai crashing into the wall, and the other between Guidetti again and Greco, who were both able to rejoin. The safety car was deployed to remove Pellegrini's Hyundai and stayed out until the chequered flag. For Salvatore Tavano, this was his fourth win of the season. Scalvini and Betera completed the podium in second and third, respectively. With Marco Pellegrini scoring only two points over the weekend, Tavano secured the driver's title with one event in hand before the end of the season. For the driver from Syracuse, this was his second successive title. <laughs> The Winter Olympics and Football World Cup venue of Sochi hosted the TCR Russia season finale. At the start of the first race, Lukashevich, Dudukalo, Maslenikov, Gavrilov and Kalmanovich kept the first five places they had on the grid. Title defender and championship leader Dmitry Bragin started 10th, but managed to move up several places in the standings during the race. 
On the final lap, Kalmanovic slowed down to let his teammate Bragin pass, but Burlutsky right behind was able to seize the opportunity and also passed Kalmanovic to finish sixth. And so Ivan Lukashevich converted pole position into his first victory of the season. His teammates Andrei Maslenikov and Alexei Duducalo completed a 1-2-3 finish for Lukol Racing, while Klim Gavrilov was classified fourth. In the second race, Bragin started from the front row of the grid in P2, but during the first lap he dropped to third, while Klim Gavrilov, one of his rivals in the title fight, took the lead at Turn 3. Gavrilov, however, clearly drove outside the track limits and so was given a drive-through penalty. While the third contender in the battle for the championship, Kirill Ladijin, was running a distant ninth. Although Gavrilov's penalty meant he was now champion, Bragin didn't settle for second place and snatched the lead from Burlitsky on lap six. Bragin won for the third time this season, while Burlitsky was second in front of Midyaev, Kalmanovic, Lukashevich and Maslenikov. For Dmitry Bragin, this was the perfect way to conclude the season and to celebrate his fourth consecutive TCR Russia title. In the final standings, the driver from Toliati beat Ladijin and Gavrilov by 35 and 41 points, respectively. Lukashevich finished fourth in front of Maslenikov and Kalmanovic. The fourth event of the inaugural TCR Japan season took place at Okayama. From the beginning of the year, Takuro Shinohara had been one of the quickest contenders. Finally, after a series of unfortunate circumstances in the previous events, he claimed his maiden win in race one. Yu Kanemaru was stripped of his second position due to a ride height infringement, and his exclusion elevated Takeshi Matsumoto and Hirobon to second and third in the race results. In race two, Shinohara won again. On the second lap, he passed Mitsuyama for second and then began closing the gap to Maijima and overtook him on lap three to take the lead. The win propelled Shinohara into the lead of the driver's standings. With only one event left at Suzuka on October the 26th and 27th, the title fight will be a thriller, with six drivers covered by just 24 points. Shinohara is the new leader, but Matsumoto is only one point behind. Kanemaru and Mitsuyama are equal on points with a gap of 11. Maijima lies in fifth position, 15 points behind the leader, and nine ahead of Hausen. TCR is not only about sprint races, but also endurance events, as fans know only too well. The IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge, which uses two- and four-hour race formats, was at Laguna Seca for the penultimate round of the season. The pairing of Gavin Ernston and Jonathan Morley took their maiden win of the season. At the wheel of their Hyundai RS3 LMS run by the Road Shagger Racing Team, they beat the Hyundai Veloster of Michael Lewis and Mark Wilkins by just two tenths at the end of the two-hour race. The victory of Ernston and Morley came in an impressive 12th to 1st performance without a pit stop in the final 50 minutes of the race. The victory relaunched their title bid as they've moved into 3rd place, 14 points behind Lewis and Wilkins and 3 behind the Honda Civic of Tom O'Gorman and Shelby Blackstock, who finished 3rd in the race. The second Brian Herter Autosport Hyundai of Mason Filippi and Harry Gottsacker slipped to fourth in the standings, 16 points off the leaders. The title fight will therefore be decided in the final round at Road Atlanta on October 10th and 11th. Road America in Wisconsin hosted rounds 13 and 14 of TC America. The first race started under cloudy skies and with a steady drizzle falling. Pole sitter Michael McCann Jr. in an Audi RS3 LMS led from the rolling start. But the slippery track saw him losing control and going wide at turn five. This was the moment when Nate Vincent's Volkswagen Golf, which had started from third on the grid, took the lead. The opening lap also saw a spin by second place Gonzalez, and so both the front row qualifiers had been caught out within a minute or so of the race starting. McCann then made another mistake on the second lap, spinning and dropping way down the order into the pack of TCA cars. While McCann began his fight back, Vincent started opening up an impressive gap at the head of the field. Despite the fact that Hertzin set the race's fastest lap, his teammate led by just over 13 seconds around halfway through the race. On lap 10, Brian Putt, fifth in the TCR class and leading the TCR Cup class, slid off the track and his Audi DSG car ended nose first in the barrier. 
Over the closing laps, Hertzin was steadily catching Vincent, with the pair separated by just under six seconds going into the final lap. Despite Vincent running slightly wide on that lap, he held his own to cross the line 21 hundredths of a second ahead of championship leader Hertzin. Gonzalez finished a distant third, while Walker was fourth ahead of Cole and McCann. Had a boy. The start of the second race was then delayed due to the pouring rain. Finally, after a few laps behind the safety car, Hertzin took the lead from pole ahead of Gonzalez, Vincent Walker and Michael McCann. The latter went off during the opening lap and rejoined at the back of the TCA class field. Three laps later it was Hertzin who skidded off the road, made a long detour around the gravel trap and eventually rejoined in fourth position. Gonzalez inherited the lead and pushed to increase his leading margin. Victor Gonzalez won the race, claiming his second victory of the season in TC America. Despite his mistake, Michael Hertzin managed to recover to finish second in front of Vincent. Walker was fourth, Pitt fifth and Pombo sixth. Hertzin's margin in the driver's standings went up to 40 points over his teammate Vincent. With 50 points still on offer in the series finale at Las Vegas on October 19th and 20th, Hertzin almost has the title in his pocket. That then was Inside the World of TCR episode 12. We'll be back in a month's time with more great touring car action from around the world, but for now, it's goodbye.